Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, October 22nd, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Santa Monica, California. Actually, just earlier today, I gave a talk here that in part covered DNS over TLS. So very fitting that Jim took a look at recent scans against port TCP 853. Port 853, of course, is the DNS over TLS port, usually using UDP, not so much TCP, but still, uh, this could be an attempt for attackers to enumerate possible DNS over TLS resolvers, possibly for denial of service attacks. Now, what isn't really clear is if uh, these servers could be used similar to normal DNS recursive resolvers, uh, because typically in order to use DNS over TLS, you first need to establish the TLS connection, which uh, does require a couple of packets going forth and back. So spoofing isn't really as trivial as in your standard UDP based DNS without TLS. So still a bit uh, open-ended here, not sure what what's happening with these scans, whether it's just curiosity or researchers. If you have any insight, uh, please let us know. And then today we have a couple of stories actually that relate to issues and security vulnerabilities in uh, security tools. First, a couple of VPN providers apparently got breached. First of all, NordVPN, but in addition to NordVPN, also ThorGuard and possibly Viking VPN were compromised according to a number of tweets and posts to 8chan. The evidence that was presented here are mostly TLS secret keys that were apparently collected from these affected services. NordVPN did issue a statement confirming the attack, stating that this was due to an insecure server administration tool that was installed on these affected servers and that the secret key that was stolen was for a certificate that was already expired at the time it was stolen. The real risk for an attack like this, of course, is that someone could use these keys and certificates to set up a fake endpoint that would then intercept traffic to these VPN providers, essentially making them ineffective. The other issue, of course, is if they had that kind of access to any of the servers at these VPN providers, then they may be able to intercept traffic that was terminated on those servers. Over the last few years, uh, the VPN business has certainly become very active, uh, very competitive, and of course, they have always been a big target given that if you are able to actually breach one of these VPNs, you would be able to get access to a lot of traffic that uh, people are not comfortable sending in the clear. And our second security tool affects uh, the Trend Micro Anti-Threat Toolkit. According to Buckhunter John Page, this particular tool will execute any binary called command.exe and recedit.exe as long as an attacker is able to place it on the system. You don't actually have to overwrite the valid binaries in order uh, to exploit this vulnerability. Now, what this bypasses is any kind of warning the user would see uh, because uh, the anti-threat toolkit is trusted, so the downloaded malware would not necessarily be recognized as downloaded from the web and would just be executed without any notice. Needless to say that Trend Micro has fixed this vulnerability, so make sure you are up to date. But let's leave the security tools behind and focus on a wireless driver vulnerability. This one affects the Realtek chipset and the driver for Linux. If you are running, for example, an Android phone that uses a Realtek Wi-Fi card, or if you're using one in your home router that runs a Linux-based operating system, then you may be vulnerable. 
no exploit yet available, but exploitation shouldn't really be all that difficult. In this case, there is no patch available, at least no official patch at this point. The vulnerability was discovered by Nico Weissman and he tweeted a code snippet that shows the vulnerability. Now, there is an unofficial patch someone released, but it requires that you compile the kernel module yourself. Uh, probably best to wait a day or two until hopefully by then you will get an official update from your Linux distribution. Android users, of course, on the other hand, may have to wait a little bit longer. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.